the obelisk was never removed from its quarry. Archaeologists have tried to understand why, after so much work, it was abandoned. If finished, it would have towered 10 stories above the ground. Decorated with images and hieroglyphs, it would have stood as a vital component in a temple complex. The obelisk was the symbol of connection between the king and the sun god. Obelisks are pieces of precision spiritual technology. For the Egyptians, an obelisk was a symbol of the sun. It was the ray of the sun, so it was sort of a power conductor. Working like a spiritual lightning conductor, obelisks could collect and channel energy from the heavens. You had to have it in one solid piece of rock. If you had it broken, it would mean that the sunbeam was being broken, and thus you would shatter the power of the god. So when the engineers discovered a crack in the obelisk at Aswan, they abandoned it. A piece of bad luck for the ancient Egyptians, which is a piece of good luck for science. One of the things in archaeology that is almost as important as successes are the failures. Evidence on and around the obelisk is revealing how the ancient quarrymen excavated the massive stones. Like a thousand-ton time machine, it offers a snapshot of 3,000-year-old work in progress. Using the evidence from the unfinished obelisk in a brand new experiment, scientists hope to demonstrate how this was possible. We began to discover amazing things that did enrich our knowledge about obelisks for the first time. Adil Kalani has spent a career investigating ancient quarrying techniques. This is a good example for natural cracks in granite layers, which is really very important to looking for before to start working. Granite has naturally occurring fault lines where the rock is already weak. By identifying and targeting these fault lines, the ancient engineers could begin the process of splitting the stone from the bedrock. It would be the ease of chiseling rock because there, there would, you'd have to cut the face, you'd have to kind of break pieces out of it, but there'd always be this plane of weakness that would help separate the rock in an expeditious manner. In the second phase, laborers bashed handheld stone pounders into the fracture line to wear the rock down. These early sledgehammers were made of dolerite, a stone much harder than granite. But the technique took time and time was a luxury that the quarrymen did not have. Pharaohs always wanted their monuments done in a hurry. Many pharaohs were worried that they simply wouldn't be around long enough. The average reign of a pharaoh was less than a decade, and no pharaoh would trust his legacy to his successor. You had all of eternity for your monuments to last, but you had a very short lifespan in which to get them built. From the sheer number of granite obelisks and statues across Egypt, it's clear that the ancient quarrymen found a solution. Beneath the quarry, the archaeologists found the clues which tell us what the solution was. What we have here, actually, it's all the story. It's like an open book. It tells us everything about what, what the Egyptian meant. Within the strata are charred mud bricks, burnt wood chips, and heat fractured shards of stone. From this, Adil believes he's worked out how Egypt's engineers accelerated the quarrying process. The Egyptian used fire to help them for splitting the stone. Heat from a fire would cause the rock to expand, and cooling would cause the rock to contract. This process weakens and can even split the rock. In theory, if the Egyptians could control this, they could split large sections of the granite. But Adil has